Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid Power Solutions and uh, in this fairly short uh, video I'm going to take you through how you connect a generic uh, tank level sensor, so this is the sensor I'll take you through it in a moment, uh, to a Serbo GX. Uh, we've made this no frills, no screen or anything there. I've got my iPad showing the uh, console and uh, on my phone just the, the, the app. So let's uh, talk about the tank level sensor for a moment. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to go into my RV. I, my tank is 40, 400 uh, millimeters deep and this is I think exactly 40, millime 40 centimeters or 400 mils. So if I just have, take a check, yeah, it's exactly 400. And uh, what this has, this obviously sits outside. I'm going to drill a hole this diameter uh, through the top of the tank and then uh, this will go in and, and basically mount this uh, flange on the top, make sure it's nicely sealed. Um, and uh, you get a lot of different makes of these uh, sending units or sensor units and uh, uh, the, the vast majority of them are, are fairly inexpensive. They just do quarters so it only shows 25, 50, 75 in full. Um, I already get that out of the existing uh, dial on, on the, the camper and so it's frustrating because you never know, you know, if it says it's 75% full, is it, you know, 75, nearly 100% or is it 75 plus 1, 76%? There's quite a big uh, variation in a quarter of a tank. So I wanted something that would tell me uh, precisely exactly how much I have. So this particular unit uh, does increments of 1%. So there will be a 100 uh, increments on this. So it'll give me a nice, very accurate idea of, of the uh, level of the tank. And what happens <clears throat> is that this thing, obviously this is a float and according to the water levels, uh, this will be uh, moving up and down as you uh, fill or use up your water. So it, this, this can be used in a number of situations. I think it can even be used in a uh, diesel tank, but I'm choosing to use it in my fresh water tank. So with the, uh, the sender, uh, the, these are based on resistance. So v vitally important that when you're working with a Serbo GX uh, that you do not use something that is actually going to pass current into the Serbo GX. You'll just blow the GX and you don't want to do that because they're quite pricey things. So these are very, very elementary. They're just simply based on uh, resistance and they all take a similar voltage. I don't even know what it is, what this sends out, but uh, it's, it, they're all pretty standard. Right, so what you have on the Serbo GX, on, uh, at the end here, you have your tank inputs. So you can see there you've got tank inputs, one, two, three, four and with a little block uh, that you, you plug in and then you plug up to four tank sending units. So with the Serbo GX as it is, you can monitor four different levels. I'm not interested in my gray waste or anything like that. All I want to know is uh, the, the level of my fresh water. In a future episode, I'll be doing a uh, LPG tank level uh, sensor and show you how to set that up. But basically, it's the same thing. Now, the uh, sending unit has two wires, a, a brown and a, and a blue, and uh, that's all that it needs because what this will be doing is it will be passing current through there, measuring the resistance, and then based on, on the resistance that it measures, it will know how full the tank is. So that's the, uh, the setup, very elementary. It doesn't matter which way these wires go. Uh, it, it's not always... Uh, the, the case that you don't worry which way the wires go, but in this particular case it doesn't matter uh, because the resistor is going to work the same whether you, you swap the, uh, the, the live and neutral around or not. So <clears throat> that's the setup, just to give you a close view. Very elementary, two wires coming in there going to the sending unit. And these wires can be quite long. I don't know the distance, but uh, it, on an average RV, it's not a problem to run it along the length of the RV. Uh, the amount of error that you introduce is absolutely minute uh, running, as, as long as they're decent cables, of course. So here's the server GX. It's powered from this battery just for this. Um, the, uh, the sending unit came with this. Uh, protective sleeve and this around the little float. So 
that's uh, <clears throat> that's the the hardware side of it really really basic elementary um, as far as the uh, software setup is concerned uh, this is what I want to do take you through now so basically um, we are assuming that you've already got your app, so you've got the Victron app, you've connected, you've uh, probably connected this to your Wi-Fi network or whatever you're using, your, your GSM module or whatever it is that you're using to connect to the internet. Um, and that uh, you've registered on the uh, the Victron site, and that you have the Gerbo, the, the server connected on on you know with all the the uh, passwords and everything that you you need with Victron. Um, we will be doing a separate video around that, but there, to be honest, there are hundreds of those on the web that you can look at. But uh, interestingly, there weren't that many that we found on a simple connection of a fresh water tank sending unit. So this is what we want to take you through now. On my iPad, uh, because I know the IP address of the Serbo on my local network, which I've got from the app here, this was really easy to get it off the app. Um, I'm able to go uh, straight on to using the IP address in, in, my, uh, in my browser um, address bar, put that in, and that brings me straight to the um, uh, the, the console to manage this thing. As you can see, I've already set up my freshwater tank. It's called freshwater tank 20. And just to show you that it actually works, let me move this to about halfway. And it takes a while, it's not instant. It takes a few seconds, it counts down and it'll settle down around about now and oh, exactly 50%. Um, so, and if I take it now to the bottom, and you can see, it'll take again, counts down, and probably, it's not quite at the bottom, probably about 2%, oh, it is actually at zero. And if I move it just slightly up, it should come up. Let's see. It's not actually moving, which is interesting. Uh, there we are, it started to move up now. Then if I bring it all the way back up to the top, <clears throat> I think it only comes up to 99%, and I'll show you why in a moment. So there you can see it's showing at 99%. So let me take you through uh, how you actually get this thing uh, set up in the app. So simply connecting it here is not going to do anything for you yet. You actually do need to set it up in the Sober GX console. So let's first go to the settings on here. If this would respond for me. Um, and then you've got to scroll all the way up till you get to IO, which is right at the bottom. You go to I.O., which is inputs, outputs, and you need to go to your analog inputs. This is an analog input. And uh, there you can see I've got uh, right here at the, the top, I've got my tank level input one, which I know that I plugged it into one. So I've basically turned it on. If you have a temperature input, obviously you've got your temperature inputs there. I had one, but I took it off for this uh, video. So I've turned that on, so that's all you need to do just to get it on. But once it is on, and you come back to your settings screen, uh, it will show disconnected, because I've now correctly configured mine, it's showing 99%, but yours will initially show that it is disconnected there where it's saying 99%. So what you'll need to do is to actually set this up and calibrate it, etc. So let's take you through all of the steps involved with that. So basically go on to that, and we are uh, setting it up. So you go set up. Now, there are a number of parameters that you can uh, input here. So firstly, the capacity of your tank, you would simply click on that and you go plus and minus to get it. And then when you have got to the right level, so let's say it was 161, uh, when I'm finished, I hit the uh, affirmative there and that saved it as that. Now, let's talk about the um, I'm going to, quite a you need to click once and then click again. Now, there are basically two standards uh, for these things that you can choose from or you can choose custom. Now, 
the, the European is uh, zero is empty to 180 is full. And then the US is 240 is empty to 30 uh, is full. So they work uh, in very, very different ways. Um, I've chosen custom because although this was meant to be a European standard as far as I'm aware, um, actually it goes up to 200 ohms or just under 200 ohms. So using the European 0 to 180 causes it to disconnect. So I've gone for a custom, which I'll show you those figures now. And uh, what I've done is I've set it the, so the sensor value in empty, set it to zero. And uh, you, can, you can try and see, so if you were to go all the way down and stop, just leave it there. Let's make sure it's right at the bottom. Um, and you scroll up here, it will show you the sensor value shown right at the bottom here, that currently it is 0 0.8. If I just hold it so that it comes all the way to the end, very definitely, it's not changing, it's gonna stay at 0 0.8. So I could have said, my empty state is one ohm, for example, but I'm quite fine with having it at zero, uh, even though it never goes quite down to zero. And then if I scroll this all the way back up to the top, you'll see it comes up to 198.0, 198.1, 197, whatever. So I've said, so I've set the, based on what my sensor is actually telling me, what my sending unit is actually telling me. So I've set it uh, zero at empty and one down in on ohms at full. Uh, from what I've seen, it never goes over 198 point something. So it never, it's never gone over 199, but you can just play around with yours. So as you can see, the European standard is zero to 180. This is uh, more than 180. So I'm not sure exactly where this, comes from in that sense, but this is fine. We can set the custom range zero to 199, and that works quite quite well, and it's giving me 99%. If I was to say, well, I actually want this to read one, you know, the top level to be 198, exactly what I have on the unit, it would have then shown me that it's 100%. I'll sh actually show you that. So let's say, click on that once and again, and let's go minus so that we are 198 exactly, and say yes, thank you, we'll accept that. Now if I come back, just for interest, uh, it's showing me that the level is 100% now. So if you wanna be absolutely 100% accurate, uh, you know, to tell you exactly what you got in your tank, but I mean, one or two percent here and there is, is nothing. Uh, when you've been working on, on, you know, a quarter of a tank, half a tank, full tank, etc. that, you know, having it one or two percent out is great. So, <clears throat> um, coming back to the setup, just to take you through all of that. So, we've said it's one, so I'll actually drop this because I know it's a 160 litre tank. Um, I've chosen the custom range of zero to 198. Uh, fluid type, you can just set anything you want. Basically, I've said mine is fresh water. You got lots of different things that you can do. I'm saying it's fresh water. Um, and when you first set it up, it won't say liters. It will say cubic meters. Um, and quite ambitious. Uh, but yeah, I, I know that I don't have a cubic meter of water. So uh, liters it is for me. And uh, that's fine. And I don't have a custom shape. I'm not going to go into custom shape now. It's quite advanced stuff, but uh, that's so that you can actually set up and, and handle complex shapes. So if the, the bottom has got a bit that bulges out or whatever, you can deal with that. Um, the averaging time, I don't need better than 10 seconds is fine. The sensor value, you can't set that as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. So it's just showing you exactly what the sensor is sending now. And uh, then you can set low and high level alarm. So not gonna go into that now. Just wanted to show you the very basics of how you actually get this uh, working. So if we come back to our uh, device list, there we have it, freshwater tank 100%. And if we come to our um, app here, so this is the, uh, the Victron VRM, uh, very elementary setup here. Obviously, I haven't got anything else attached here. Um, all it's showing is my fresh water sitting at 99%. So this will um, 
update shortly because as we saw the level is now 100% so this will update in a minute or two or however long it takes and show the uh, level at 100% of my fresh water. So obviously you know you can sort of configure these screens and do various things um, but that's handy for you to see that uh, on the fly. Uh, of course this this console you can have uh, I don't it doesn't really show on your pages that nicely um, but uh, yeah I, I, I prefer to just read it here on this device list. So there we are folks, uh, as I said, short, sharp, sweet video on how to configure this. And um, you know, you'll probably be asking if you've already got some sort of indicator in your RV or your motorhome or your boat, whatever, why would you want to put this extra one in? Well, it's, it's handy because it's showing me increments of uh, 1%, which I quite like. I like to know exactly how much water I've got. And it's also um, uh, putting it onto VRM uh, so that you can go onto your Victron site and see at a glance just how much fresh water you have. Uh, you can, if you want to, you can get a, a GX touch screen going, uh, or you can get one of the generic screens going and set them up in your camper, or you can mount a tablet of sorts that uh, keeps us going all the time uh, to show you the values. And I might, I might just get a cheap, nasty tablet that I put up there that I can actually run and just keep all of these uh, displayed there just because I like to monitor things. So hope you enjoyed this, hope it's helpful and uh, in, in some of the future episodes we'll be showing you how you set up uh, temperature probes, um, how you can make your own temperature probe and uh, we'll be showing you uh, things like how do you set it up to uh, communicate or, or to measure the level of your LPG tank and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next episode. Cheers.